Kentucky are at their best, as this quiet countryside serves as a top breeding ground for the world's best standard bred as well as thoroughbred horses. That quietness around Lexington will be broken today in conjunction with the 92nd renewal of the Kentucky Futurity. A bold new concept in harness racing will be launched on ESPN. Two-year-old Euro Coat Trotters are here at the famed Red Mile for the first of a series of eight races in a quest for their share of a total purse of over $4 million in the 1984 Breeders' Crown. Hospitality is warm. The scenery is beautiful. We're here at the Red Mile. And, of course, in Lexington, Kentucky, and an excellent crowd is turned out for the first in a series of eight for our Breeders' Crown. And we've got some excellent racing coming up for you. Hello again, everybody. I'm Sam Smith. Delighted to be working here at the Red Mile in Lexington with the hostess, as always, for the award-winning down-the-stretch program on ESPN, Sharon Smith. And, Sharon, as you take a look at this eight-race series, it's almost the starting of a dream we feel here in Lexington. It really is. It's a brand new concept, as we've mentioned in racing. The Breeders' Crown, uh, sort of a double concept, really, to establish a series of races that could serve as championships. Before this, if you had a good two-year-old trotting colt, you could race him in New Jersey on a given Saturday. Somebody else could race his colt in, in Pennsylvania or somewhere else. Well, the good colt should be in these series of races. It also allows the breeders, the people that own these very valuable stallions, to take part in providing the big purse money. So the owners of these stallions, to make the offspring of their stallions eligible for this series, have had to uh, pay the equivalent of one stud service, which ranges from $75,000 for the great albatross, 40000 for nitros, down to 1000 or even less for lesser stallions. And so they have contributed to this purse money. And it's a, a brand new concept in racing and, and one that is working extremely well so far. The first in our series will be the two-year-old Coat Trotters, and I guess unpredictability would be the best word to describe it, wouldn't it? Well, Trotters are known for being difficult to maintain on stride. They can't use the kind of equipment that Pacers can to help them maintain their stride. Combined with the fact that they are two-year-olds, they're babies, they've just recently really learned their racing lessons, they break stride, they do strange things occasionally, but a good trotter who can keep his gait and his smooth gait it is about as beautiful a thing as you can see, and there's certainly some good trotters involved today. Sharon, there is a different format here than we have seen certainly in our Hamiltonian that you saw earlier this year on ESPN. It was the two qualifying heats into the race-off. It'll still be that way with the four top horses in both of the eliminations moving to the finals, but again, it does not have to be one of the winners from the first to the second elimination qualified as the winner. Any of those horses can win, and that's the way it ends on this particular format. Good, bad, or indifferent. How do you look at that as far as the way the strategy of the races run, Sharon? Well, the most interesting thing is it's still heat racing, and heat racing is extremely difficult for any kind of a racehorse, especially a two-year-old. And you're talking about very young horses on what's turned out to be a rather warm and humid day having to come back and race a second time, and certainly it plays a part. We will look at the first two eliminations, and, and whoever didn't have to work the hardest is going to be the best bet probably in the, the final. Not only is there excitement with the Breeders' Crown, but also the 90-second renewal of the oldest of the Hornets races right here, and that's the Kentucky Futurity. Three-year-old trotters get ready to go there, and an excellent field will be watching today as well. The Kentucky Futurity is the third leg of the trotting Triple Crown, and uh, we do have some horses that competed in the other legs. These are slightly older trotters, but they're still trotters. They're still difficult to keep on stride, but they are really outstanding horses who have proven themselves so far, so that a double treat for us today. It's nice to be surrounded by the expert Sharon Smith will be high atop the track here with me. Down on the track and watching all of it will be a gentleman from Lexington, Kentucky, and knows this red mile very, very well. We're talking about Kenny Rice. Let's pick up his comments. Kenny? Thank you very much, Sam. There's a lot of tradition here at the Red Mile. 109 years there's been racing on this site. Now, part of the tradition of the Red Mile is also the Grand Circuit in the fall. And part of that Grand Circuit tradition is that when horses come in here a lot of times as favorites in September, they leave in October as also runs. This is a wide open two-year-old trot. There are no stars as of yet. What this Breeders' Crown may do today is create some stars. And also in the Kentucky Futurity, we have a chance for a first in a long time. That could be if Armbrough Crouch wins. It could be the first time that a gelding wins this Futurity since 71. And then there's a filly in it, Fancy Crown. She's been impressive. How will she do today against the Colts? Sam? 
Well, it's an exciting day for trotting here at Lexington, Kentucky at the famed Red Mile. We'll have the first elimination for the Breeders' Crown. We return with more from Lexington after this time out.